in 2014, our goal was to educate and inspire the next generation of young black leaders. So we set out to find the nation's best of the best to reveal the secrets to success. Our belief is that we should teach the young early the things that we learn late. Our lives are shifting the culture. Our lives are changing the narrative. This is the Shine Hard Conversation. What's up, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Shine Hard Conversation. I'm your host, Johnny Bailey, and this week I'm in Washington, D.C. at Tech Hub N3 with entertainment journalist Gia Peppers. Gia works behind the scenes with BET, Essence Magazine, and you can also find her with the Washington Wizards as their official host. Today, she's going to tell us about how she got to where she is today, how we can get involved in the entertainment industry, and of course, some gems to her personal success. So without further ado, Gia, it's time to shine. Let's do it. So from the outside looking in, people can see how far you've come, but they don't always know how your journey began. Right. So talk about your childhood and what growing up was like for you. For sure. Um, growing up was incredible because I grew up right here in D.C. and Maryland I'm from the DMV. I always, always am repping it because it was such... I grew up in like black excellence, black love. Um, Prince George's County, like you know, was was. You guys, you remember the show Baldwin Hills? Yeah. It was like just black people being excellent, being doctors and lawyers and and entrepreneurs, yeah. and all I knew was excellence. Mm. Um, and it and it definitely shaped my vision of mm. of everything I could be when I from the time I was like you know old enough to understand yeah. what life was about or yeah. at least what achieving was about um so my parents are you know always my number one reasons to why anything that i accomplish happens That's because right. they raised me um they've been married for 28 years wow. product of like real real not always perfect but amazing black love mm. uh, and my dad is a journalist okay um he's been in, in hard news as a manager as a talent as a reporter sorry talent reporter two different things a reporter and uh for the past 40 years so he's been doing it forever my mom is a dentist so um i grew up with That's just awesome. a an everyday example of what's showing up for not only yourself but your family mm. and um your dreams looks like and so i grew up in the dmv this is you know i went to the high school here went to middle school everything was right here right. and so it's so great that we're on but you didn't go to howard though we well i was gonna say it's so stay? great that we're on howard's <laughs> campus because i know why you didn't go it's the other hu you should have went to the well road. i didn't go to hampton no. either because i knew that howard was the right hu but I will say that, um, you know, I grew up on this campus. My mom uh, would literally take us to every homecoming from the time she's right. an alum, from, from the time that I was like a baby yeah. to 18 and I started to be like, mom, I don't want to go this year. Like I've right. been here, like, you but almost then, But then literally the year after, like when I was allowed to go by myself, I started going by myself. So, um, you know, it, this is love to me. This is home to me. Um, and it means so much to me. Uh, this this place means so much to me. Right on. So I love DC. I love Maryland. So when you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I was going to be a singer. First, I was going to be a veterinarian because I love dogs. Okay. But then I realized I couldn't be like prejudiced to other animals. <laughs> so I was like, this isn't going to work. And then my mom was like, you know, you still have to go to med school. And I was like, Oh. I don't want to take care of people though. Right. So why do I have Poodle to do lives that? matter? You yeah, like, like I didn't understand why I had to, I was like, don't you just walk them and clean up their poop? So oh. that dream had to go because I don't really do well with blood. Um, so she was like, well, you need to figure out something else. Because every single day my mom would ask me, my brother and my little sister, uh, my little brother and my little sister, I'm the oldest, um, the five things we wanted to be. Mm. And so every single day I was thinking, like after school, like what, is, what, what do I want to do? And then my mom would say, okay, so those are the five things you want to do. What are you going to do? Mm. What are the five steps to take that you need to mm. take to achieve that? That's such an awesome question for a parent to ask yeah. their kid. Yeah. And so she was always, I mean, my mom is the illest. She, she is like, the the engine that all of us kind of run on and right. we learned from her how to work yeah. like hard how to how to not only work hard but then enjoy the the labor and the and the love of your work and right. then also enjoy what you get from your work um so you know she's been you know everything as a like she's my superwoman That's um right. but 
I would definitely say I wanted to be a vet. I wanted to be a singer. Um, grew up singing, dancing, acting, was okay. in musical theater, did yeah. plays, did everything in co I was, you know, dancing in college, yeah. did the Debbie Allen Dance You grew Academy. up under the bright lights. Yeah, um, yeah, grew up dancing on stage, performing. Yeah. Um, and so I really want, and I still, I, I have a feeling I'll get back on stage soon really? and sing and dance and act soon. Yeah, so I, you know, that's not a dream that's lost. I heard they got an open spot at the Wizards dance team. Well, I need a few, a few a few classes before I can do that. But them girl, those girls are yeah, them incredible. Girls are, are I love great. them. And so, you know, I think that at the end of the day, um, I knew I wanted to be something that had to do with entertainment. That's right. I knew that I wanted to be on TV. I used to watch 106 and Park every single day, and I was like, I can do that. Back in the Free and AJ? Back in the Free and AJ yeah. days, even a little of Roxy and Terrence. Respect. And then I went to college and was like, I don't really, I'm not home at this yeah. time anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be. So let's um, talk about your journey into entertainment and yeah. how you got started. Yeah, for sure. So I know from looking at your Instagram and your brand, you have a number of hats you wear in, in the industry. Yeah. So talk about the slate of roles that you have and what your day-to-day -day looks like. Yeah. Um, well, do you want me to talk about the start first? Do you want me to talk about the day-to-day? -day? Well, let's talk about what you're doing now and then we'll kind of take it back into how you got there. Cool. So I do a lot. Um, at the core, I'm a freelancer. So mm. that means that like, you know, I don't have an office that I go into every single day. That right. means that I create my own schedule, but it also means that like you have to hustle yeah. to make sure that you are yeah. able to live in, right. e in New York and secure in that bag. Secure several bags. Yeah. Um, Hello. So I think uh, that, you know, that's the easiest way to put it. I freelance, but I'm an on-air talent entertainment journalist. And yeah. then I also manage um, Ebro Darden's website, uh, okay. blameebro.com. Okay. And so I'm the managing editor of that and I have an incredible team and we, you know, create content for what Ebro cares about. Um, and he cares about a lot. So music and Black Lives Matter, politics, and making sure people stay woke. So we have yeah. a lot um, always to cover, but uh, I also, you know, I'm the interim host for the Washington Wizards, right. so we host all the home games. Um, me and my co-host Rodney Rakai, we host all the home games. Right. I love basketball, I love the NBA, mm -hmm. I love the Wizards. I've, yeah. I literally grew up in the Verizon Center, yeah. which is now the Capital One Arena. It's so good to see them winning. Oh God, yeah. Oh my God, it's great. Right. It's definitely me. I'm definitely the lucky charm. I'm just playing. <laughs> they work hard. And <laughs> that's like three years before they made the playoffs. But no, I they were. I've been there for three seasons, and every single season they made the playoffs oh. except for. One. I stand corrected. Yeah, so I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. But it's me. No, I'm just kidding. Um, they work really hard, and they're a really great team, and they're a yeah. young team. And I wish that um, the D.C. fans would come out a little harder for us uh, because we are Redskins. Like, D.C. is a football of place. Of course, of course. And the Redskins have had a difficult yeah. time, but they still ride for them. And so I'm like, come on, y'all, ride for the Wizards. Yeah. We actually winning. <laughs> But, you know, I'll see you at the prize, yeah, uh, Capital One Arena. Yeah. Um, and then um, I am an uh, entertainment journalist and on their talent for, like, BT. So mm. I do digital work with BT, and I also do network stuff with them. I did, like, the celebrity basketball game and yeah. was a correspondent with Michael Smith and Jamel Hill. Wow. And, um, you know, was able to do that for a BT Awards weekend. Um, and then we then I also work with Essence and cover their press junkets. Right. So um, I go out and get to interview, like, incredible people like Pharrell and... Right. Pharrell. Yeah, I saw that on, on your on your IG. You know, that like was, things like that. How was that experience? Pharrell is, it, uh, he's incredible. Like he's just one of those people yeah. that you just want to sit and talk with for years, <laughs> but you know he has to create. Like he's yeah. a create. Like he, even in the way he dresses to the way he looks, like mm. you can just see that creativity flows out of him. Yeah. So you just want to be around so you can be inspired, yeah. but. You know, he's Soak he's up some of that juice. Yeah, that some mojo. of that nerd creativity, <laughs> that N-E-R-D, like I just want to produce music now, right. but I'm no Pharrell. Um, and so, yeah, it's been it's been a yeah. really fun, incredible ride. But um, and then I also work with, you know, VH1. I did their um, uh, Truth campaign a few yeah. months back, and then I work with uh, just started working with Aspire TV. So you're, you're all over. You're in the field of entertainment, right? And you're a freelancer, so people come to you, they seek you, you seek them, and you're making things happen, right? Right. Right. So when you went back, taking it back to like high school or even at Rutgers, what steps did you take to get involved in the industry? Oh, wait, I forgot to say I'm on oh. this incredible podcast called Black Girl Pod. Oh, yeah. Shout where out. Um, a lot of people love us. Really? Thanks for listening, y'all. Thanks. But yes, um, so we do basically in high school, I knew I wanted to start the track 
mm. to become a journalist. Right. Um, and so they had the newspaper and yeah. the morning news. And so I did both. Okay. I was on the morning news, like I think like once a month, because you know, they had to rotate. It's like when you were like on a, um, a, a middle school uh, basketball team, like everybody yeah. got to play. So <laughs> they rotated. Everybody's kid needs some minutes. Everybody's <laughs> kid needs some minutes. So we rotated. So I was on like once a month and I really liked it. Like I thought it was fun. I was mm -hmm. like, this is cool. I get to talk. Yeah. I was not popular in school. But I mean, I was, but like I wasn't cool. Like I'm not a cool person. Most of the cool people at high school like, aren't that cool anymore. Right. But it's a different conversation. It's a different conversation for another time. Yeah. You don't worry about being cool <laughs> because you'll win later. Yeah. Um, and so I, I had a lot of friends though. And so um, and I started writing for the newspaper and I really, really liked it. And I was like, journalism is cool because one, my mom will pay for this degree. Hello. She shan't never. She said, I will not pay for you to go be playing on some stage. Uh -oh. And my mom, you know, she's she's a dentist so she's like you go to school you work then you you know right. do that but it's a different type of mindset and a different grind that you mm -hmm. have to be a journalist like it's about your network it's about how many internships did you have right. are you creating relationships where people remember you right. and if they remember you do they like what they remembered mm -hmm. and are you working hard enough to the point where if you're walking down you know a red carpet will somebody know your work mm -hmm. and someone and that's how i met ebro he was like Oh, you're that girl, Gia. Yo, I think you're dope. Like, I've seen what you do. And I was like, I, you never know who's watching you. Never so know. always be on. Well, you have a pretty big platform with the Wizards. I right. feel like that's how I kind of initially saw you. and was like, okay, Gia. Yeah. I see her on the big screen when I'm right. at the game. So, right, right, you know, right. You're, yeah. You never know who's watching. Right. Well, that was before. I mean, Ebro oh. and Essence and all that was before the Wizards. Oh, yeah, I go way back. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, that's been my big brother for a minute. That's real. But I definitely um, think that I knew in high school. And then in college, I started interning. So my dad, you know, is the best part about being a journalist is I can call my dad and be like, yeah. man, today was rough, huh? Bruh. Trump, huh? <laughs> but he's like, <laughs> But he understands why it's rough. Like, you don't want to talk. Who wants to talk about this mm. imbecile that is running things? I'm so tired of seeing him on the exactly. news. Exactly. And it's not even been a full year. Yeah, so, you know, it gets crazy, but it's dope because I can talk to my dad. So when I first started out, I was like, well, duh, I literally have a mentor in my dad. Yeah. Um, and so I would talk to him about what to do. And he was like, well, if you want to do entertainment, because when I first started, entertainment wasn't that big of a, entertainment journalism wasn't that big of uh -huh. a, a, a field. So you think like, social media has kind of evolved it and made it a thing? The shade room is a reputable source. <laughs> like it is very real yeah. how how much uh, social media has created this new lane for not only income, but just mm -hmm. a new way of living. Absolutely. No one had phones out at concerts 10 years mm -hmm. ago. We was all enjoying yeah. the moment, seeing celebrities, singing the, song. singing the songs. Now we're like, like no one used to care. Yeah. So I think, you know, that is a really big thing. But my dad was like, the one thing you need to do is get an internship mm -hmm. and you can start as soon as you get in college. No one told me that. So I'm yeah. telling you that. And so I literally, my first summer out of um, Rutgers University, I came back home for the summer and I interned with Donnie Simpson. Um, mm -hmm. And it was his last summer at WPGC. Okay. And so he taught me that I could like be a really nice person. Cause you know, you always hear about the industry, energy, everybody's yeah. shysty and crazy. Yeah. And, like, and there are. It's cutthroat. There are a lot of shysty and crazy people, but you don't have to be that way. Mm. And, and Donnie taught me that he mm. is the nicest, most incredible person. And if you guys don't know who Donnie Simpson is, y'all need to look him up. He's the original VJ. Your mama probably has a crush on him, but eh? he's Bay, ultimate Bay, but uncle Bay. And so he's, you know, he's one of those people that makes everyone feel like they're a million, mm. a millionaire. Like even if you're the janitor to, Absolutely. you know, when Joe Scott came in, it, it was just, you know, yeah. that, those type of moments. The true character of a, of a man is how they treat someone who can do nothing for them. Exactly. And he has all the character in the world, which is why he's been on the radio since he was 15 yep. and is still on the radio. Right on. And so then after that, I did my internship with Big Tigger, who's one of my mentors yeah. as well. And his, his, his style is a little bit different. He's younger, you yeah. know, he's fun. He's like, he's like really friends with these celebrities. He's like, yo, that time at the club last yeah, night was bro. crazy. That's why he, you get on them bottles, bro. You ain't need all them bottles. Right, yeah. like, and he, but he knows. Like, so his relationship with the entertainment industry taught me that you can make friends. Like, mm. it's not all, that, but that's also a, a, a line that you have to watch. It is. Um, but you can make friends and you can enjoy it. Um, and then I did that for another semester um, and Danella was there and she was, she's been a personality for a while Then Free came and yeah. that was incredible because I got to meet Free and I was like, hey. you're one of the reasons why I even mm. started doing this. 
Um, and then after that, I did two seasons with the Wendy Williams show in New York. Um, and I did live with Kelly and Michael, as a, and, all, and all these were internships. So was, was this all like momentum? Like how were you getting in the door with these companies? Uh, for everything, you just, everything pretty much was you apply online. Mm. You apply. So you just apply online and they hit you up? And they hit you up and then you show up to the interview and you, my whole thing was I was willing to learn. Mm. Never go to an interview thinking that you know everything. Mm. Don't go being arrogant. No one wants to work with, mm. first of all, your job as an intern, 90% of it is just to make sure they're good. Right. In that 10% where they expect you to shine and, and they ask you for you know a creative idea and you have something that you've been waiting for, you shine there and then they give you more responsibility and then it becomes mm -hmm. instead of 90% of go and get coffee, make sure my my uh, you know my my papers are on the desk you know in the morning, make sure I know what the latest stories are. Then it becomes 90% of that be go, goes to 70%. And mm -hmm. the next thing you know, I was on air with Donny Simpson wow. and you know talking about Beyonce. Mm -hmm. My favorite. So who, you know, so I'm just like, the hard work really, really helps. That's right. But I always knew that if I was going to do entertainment journalism, I was going to do it right, mm. which is subjective. But right to me was, um, well, objective, which right to me was making sure that I tried every single side of journalism. Okay. So producing, writing, researching, um, on air, uh, Edit, editing, video directing, everything. Yeah. I wanted to try everything to yeah. make sure that I really, really could do it and, and to make sure I knew how everything worked mm. so I can make sure that I wanted to be on air talent. Because right. on air talent, people think that this is glamorous. It's, it's, it's not a glamorous. It's not as, gl as glamorous as it looks? Absolutely not. So, what's the one thing that you've learned, the one lesson that you've taken away from this industry that sticks with you today? I will always, it's always a two party answer. What's for you is for you, yeah. is my number one thing. Mm. I think if you are in entertainment, and you work in this industry, and it's a competitive industry. Right. There's no other way to put it. Um, you know, I have friends who are on their talents who will go out for the same job, and it's like, hey, I hope you get it. Yeah, and they, and they genuinely mean, like, I hope you get it too, but whoever has to be picked, gotta be picked. Right. But what God has for you is for you. So at the end of the day, if you go out for something and seven of your friends go out for it, if it's your job, it'll be your job. Right. And on the other hand of that, if someone gets that job and you don't get it, don't beat yourself up. It just wasn't your opportunity. Mm. More no's leads to all of the yeses in the world that you probably didn't even see coming. Right on, right on. Um, so that's the one thing. And then the other side is um, the work works. Mm. Meaning. Don't nothing work but work, girl. Meaning at the end of the day, like you can't, Yeah. you can fake. Instagram is great, but people yeah. lie so much about what they do and who mm -hmm. they're with and who they know. Like mm -hmm. half of the celebrity posts you see with dudes like, yeah, that's my bro. I met him. Ah, we hooked up. Right. You, they probably just took the one picture for two seconds and was like, all right, cool. See you later, son. Yeah. Like, don't believe what you see. Mm. Believe what you, believe what they create. Believe what they are mm. about. Um, and so I would tell people, if you really want to make it work, yeah. like don't, don't let anything that you think is cute That's be real. the reason why you're doing this. Don't be an honor and talent because you want to be cute That's and talk real. to people. That's real. So on this show, I sit down with so many dope influencers that inspire thousands of people, right? But for me, I'm always fascinated with who inspires the influences. Oh, yeah. So if you had to name two or three people on the Mount Rushmore of inspiration for Gia Peppers, who would they be? Yes, I'm gonna do four, because I really okay. love inspirational stuff. I start with my mama. Your mama? Mom is literally walking inspiration for me. Yeah. Um, seeing her work so hard every day. She is, should be Jamaican. We may be, I don't know, slavery messed up things. I don't know where I'm from, but <laughs> it's, it's true. Um, we're gonna do a genealogy test. Yeah, I was about to eventually, mention that. But Amazon had like a sale on that recently, so. Oh, oh and I missed it. <laughs> I'm gonna try, I'm gonna pay attention to that. But um, my mom, uh, Oprah Winfrey, I mean, yeah. there are no words, She's but like what the, I. The queen. The queen of, of this. Yeah. Like, there is no woman on earth as powerful and she's powerful than a lot more like she's power mm -hmm. um but i what i respect about oprah is she used her platform not to like take people down right. not to not to try and put a shame on america for being a certain way mm. she was like i'm struggling you're probably struggling let's figure out how we can build and grow and be our best selves together right. 
And she did that and came into hundreds of thousands of people's living rooms every single day every at four day. o'clock for, I think, what, how many seasons? 20, almost 20 seasons, somewhere in that. But so long that people, I grew up yeah. watching Oprah. Absolutely. Like she was an aunt to me in my head before, you know, before I even wanted to be a journalist. Right. Um, and the imagery of her being on TV, a yeah. black woman who's not always, you know, a size three sometimes. I've seen her be a size three, but you we've know. We've seen her go through some We've seen some her phases. go through, but, but even then, a woman who shows up and is confident in herself and is like, I'm a vessel for goodness, right. let me be used, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. Um, and so Oprah is, you know, number two. Um, Beyonce. Mm. Beyonce because not. Is that the Beyonce accent? That's Beyonce. Oh, okay. If you listen to Mama Tina and her, they talk like, they say, hi, I'm Beyonce. Hi, I'm Beyonce. That's how she does it. And I've been a fan of her for 20, 96, 20 years now. 20 years yeah, of fan of Beyonce. That's right. Um, since Destiny's Child. Since Destiny's Child. Yeah. Like the first time I heard, dun, 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 I was like, what is that? It starts speaking to your spirit. I was six and I was like, these dudes always be saying no, but they really mean yes. No dudes were talking to me, <laughs> but it's fine. Um, and so I think the best part of Beyonce is that she continuously, continuously reinvents herself mm. to the point where the Beyonce we got in Crazy in Love is nothing like the Beyonce right. in Lemonade. But it's because it's natural growth for yeah. her and her only competition is herself. Right. So she's like, all right, so I broke records last time, dropping it at midnight. Let me go ahead and just do a full film, mm. put it on HBO, make some money, right. make HBO free for everybody, and then put out the album and then only make it available on title of my husband's thing so that we can get more followers and people to buy. And then I'm going to do this and then I'm going to make a Grammy. It's just like, who? Right. She's so far ahead, it's all uncharted territory. She and just, people are yeah. like, I, I, if you don't like Beyonce, you don't like yourself and it's okay. But I will say that her excellent, the, her continuously striving to be better mm. and, and seeing that as a fan definitely let me know that the sky is not only the limit, but also like where I should be living. Right. Like I need to be up there being excellent at all times yeah. because it's possible, oh, yeah. um, and so Beyonce, and then I would say the fourth person is Maya Angelou, mm. and just because <sighs> I wish I could have met her, like I really do wish I could have just sat with her and like listened to her. Um, but Maya is the the I feel like a moral compass that this world is missing mm. right now, um, and just listening to her, no matter if I'm having a bad day, I'll turn on some Stevie Wonder and listen to a Maya Angelou masterclass, the one Oprah did with her, and it was mm. so good. Um, and so those are the four okay. that would be on my Mount Rushmore of inspiration. That's dope. That's yeah. very dope. So a major staple of this project is passion changes everything. Oh, show. Sure. Because I believe passion will lead us to our purpose. Yep. So I can tell that you're walking in your, in your passion. What would you say is your passion and when did you know? That's a good question. My passion, my passion is being a prism for excellence and, and, and shining. Mm. Um, but my passion also comes, I really want everyone to be them, their best selves. I really, 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 really am so sick of seeing people like level out at mediocrity right. and be like, gotta check. This is it. Like, if we as a people knew how excellent, if we stood in the power of how excellent we actually yeah. are, we change culture. Right. We are culture, right. we create we are culture. culture. Like, Jay-Z. there is no culture without us. That's Jay-Z right. just said that on yeah. the Rap Radar podcast. Shout out to Beat Out and Elliot. Hey. I definitely, and Ho, I definitely think that if we all stood up tall in who we were and not yeah. only, like, loved on each other and support, supported each other, like, right. real life support, real not life, just being yeah. like, yeah. Not Instagram life. like. Right, like, like, real life support. Mm. Like, yo, that was dope. Like, really showed up for mm-hmm. each other. Tell somebody about my brand and my hustle. That, yeah. and even gave the keys. Like, we always get very crabs in a barrel y when it mm-hmm. comes to, like, how did you do it? Mm-hmm. You have to give the keys because you think other races and generations ain't giving keys. Yeah. That's how they've been able to make sure gentrification doesn't happen to their neighborhood. Right. Like, you gotta, we have to make sure we're responsible for each other. That's real. And so, um, so what separates people who have made a dream a reality and people who haven't? Perseverance. Mm. The one thing, the one thing that separates people That's it. Perseverance. is they did not give up 
when they failed. That's right. Because that's another thing I've learned in this business. Failure is going to happen. Mm. I think people think that you wake up in the morning and you get you post a picture on Instagram and you use hashtags and you're uh, a and journalist. You're, and you're lit. Or you're um, a chef or mm. a, oh, a photographer. No, it takes time. Yeah. It takes, go take class. Yeah. There is always something that you can be better yeah. at. Master your craft. Master your craft. And then also, when you try and fail, it is okay. Take mm -hmm. that as a lesson instead yeah. of something that makes you stop. That's real. Um, What's been the biggest challenge for you? Whoosh. I always have challenges. Um, you mean today? <laughs> no. Uh, I, I would say the biggest challenge for me has been I'm a nice person by, uh, Mer I'm like a Merlin girl through okay. and through. So I'm a nice Merlin. Girl. Merlin, yeah. um, you heard it. I heard it. So I am nice. I like. I'm a nice but can person. Can you be nice in that industry? That's what I was gonna say. The challenge is balancing being a nice person who was raised right. That mm -hmm. means you come into a room and you say hello to people mm -hmm. and you smile and you are responsible for the energy that you bring in the room and you like people. But when you're talking business, let's talk business. Yeah, I appreciate that, but no, that's not my rate. And then also knowing when to say no. Because um, I'm a person that likes to, I like to give. I'm like, ah, boy, you only got $5, but uh, you want me to host for six hours? Like, yeah. no, I can't help you, but I can post your event. Right. You know, like, there's a way to make things work. So I would say my biggest challenge has been respecting myself enough to, to, to have what I'm worth, mm. to ask for what I'm worth. That's real. Um, and then, Letting other people tell me when I'm wrong, like mm. it's, I'm not bad at listening to that, but actually like taking that in right. and actually like, cause I'm I'm definitely a person. I've had a lot of mentors like Felicia Butter Butterfield Jones, who is the oh. um, head of diversity yeah. at Google. You yeah. know, um, is one of my favorite people on She's earth. Awesome. Yeah, big very, sister very to me. Yes, and so you know, I've had a lot of mentors. Um, you know, so many people, Ebro, so many people that have poured into me on how not to like make those mistakes. So yeah. I, I, I take advice well. I love taking advice and I like giving advice, but you know, sometimes when you think you're doing something so great and you're like, I put everything into this and they're like, that sucked. And you're like, <laughs> well, I guess I'll try it back again. So when you do it wrong and you fail and you don't get the gig and you don't get the opportunity, but you keep going. Perseverance has been uh, a mainstay for you and yeah. your success. What really inspires you to succeed? What is it that thing that keeps you going? My mom's still working. Mm. My dad's still working. Everybody I know is still working. I don't want that. Mm. I can't wait for the day. And I can call my mom and be like, hey, girl. She's like, hey, DJ. I'm like, look, I got two tickets for you and dad. There's a villa in Round Hill in Jamaica with your name on it. Hey. Two weeks, I already called all your drives. They said, nah, you don't got to come in. So actually, I quit for you. Um, so and she would kill me because she loves working. She loves working. she's the reason I, I have so many appointments jobs, today. Right. She, yeah. The reason I have so many jobs because she has so many jobs. And so I, that's my, I can't wait till that moment where I can call both of them and be like, yo, the PJ's outside right. or at least a first class flight. Go have fun in Jamaica yeah. on me. Everything's paid for. i will be loved. I paid the mortgage this month. I can't wait until they have poured in so much into the dreams of me and my brother and my sister. My brother is a mm -hmm. D1 basketball player. Where? My sister is in med school right now. Like, they poured in so much excellence mm -hmm. into ambition. us. Ambition. And ambition. We don't have a choice yeah. but to be excellent. That's real. So um, what keeps me going is that. And then also my favorite part of being a Wizards host is the young girls who come up to me and they're like, I want to be, I want to do that. And, and, not, yeah. and not like... Like, teenage girls are incredible, but like the babies. Oh, they just melt because your heart. Because that means something to me, yeah. that you see that you can be that. Mm. Like, that means something. Yep. Because I live in New York and Brooklyn, and, and there's a, a lot of kids who've never even been outside the borough, mm -hmm. and never even seen somebody other than a drug dealer, or mm. a stripper, or you know, somebody who's yep. just like trying to live pay to, paycheck to paycheck, yep. and there's yep. nothing wrong with that. But expose your kids to excellence. Expose your kids yeah. to their dreams and, and believe in their dreams. Absolutely. Because my parents did that with me. Yep. And now I'm living my dreams. Absolutely. And so, that's what Shine Hard is all about. Right. It's just creating that awareness and, and showing people the opportunities that are available, the variety of, of lanes that, are, that exist. Right. And this is how you have succeeded in this lane. Right. And there are so many lanes. There are. And, and, and your job might not even be a thing yet. Yeah. Like, don't think you, you can't can create do it. a lane. Literally, we are the generation yeah. of lane creators. <laughs> there are probably so many lanes right now, people can't even drive. 
So, you know, I think it's so dope that, you know, there are tools like Instagram and Twitter where yeah. you can brand yourself every single day. Absolutely. So um, be careful what you tweet and post. Be careful. And that actually takes me to my next question. And there's so much going on socially and politically in this country and in our community right now. What would you say frustrates you the most about today's culture? Donald J is the number one uh, frustrator for me. Yeah, I mean, just I because I can't believe that you can be so incompetent. That is crazy to me. You did nothing to deserve the like the presidency is should be sacred. It should be it used to heralded. Be. It used to be. Yeah. Um, that's the that's the number one thing that frustrates me about the world we live in today. Nothing is really sacred. Mm. Marriage isn't sacred. Mm. People, friendships aren't sacred. Mm. Uh, lives aren't sacred. Yeah, it's like oversharing generation. That, that's kind of like the backdraw of our our social media like glory. Right, is that everything? Yeah, is fake. Mm. Nothing is real. It's mm. just for likes. Like. Mm. I saw this girl on Instagram the other day. She had like a nose job and you know weave and everything like that. And I was like, I hope she didn't do that for likes. Because oh, yeah, she, she just did. looks like a regular Instagram, like a girl that you see on your explore plays every single day. Right, right. Instead of like being who God made you to be. Mm. Um, and so, you know, that's frustrating. But then also, again, racism is frustrating because our parents, our grandparents, our great great grandparents fought so hard for us to not have to go through this. That's real. I don't have the answer to that, but mm. it's, it's frustrating because I have a little brother. I'm a black woman. I have black friends and family. Right. And it's crazy to know that you can walk outside and see the wrong person and lose your life because of the color of your skin, yeah. not because of what you did to somebody. Yeah. Um, and it's sad that we still have to go through that. Yeah. So that would be the number one, you know, those, those two would be the frustrating things. Nothing is sacred and the fact that we're still dealing with racism. What can, what can we do as a millennial generation to be activists? How can we push the culture forward? Right. I am such a fan of you activate your activism by what you are doing and do it excellent. Mm. Be excellent as mm. you're doing it. Um, I've that. been to a lot of like really incredibly moving conversations with um, Tamika D. Mallory, Valicia is very close with all of them, so she leads a lot of those like sessions. Right. Um, with Tamika D. Mallory as, as the helm, and then Brittany Pacchetti, and um, all these voices, D-Ray. D-Ray I actually met like two weeks ago, and I was like, I love you. D-Ray McKesson, and all these incredible like people. Let me guess are, what he was wearing. Hmm. <laughs> A blue vest. Nah, but he rocks that blue vest. My man's be fly. He made a staple. He, okay, you gonna see him on the Amtrak, you know exactly who that is, that's D-Ray. And so, um, and thank you for your work, all of you young people. My friend Darius Gordon, who's actually from right here in DC, who's with um, the Justice League, um, you know, they always say, you have to still show up in your workplaces. You have to still show up in whatever you wanna do mm -hmm. and be excellent at it and then use your conversation. Yeah to like create the dialogue that will open up the minds of the people who are around mm. you that might not know. That's real. Um, and then don't be afraid to speak how you feel on it. Uh. There's a lot of celebrities that are tied up in like endorsement deals that say they can't say things. And I will never sign this deal that says I can't speak on right. what I believe. Right. Um, and I think it's important that we do see our leaders speaking on it. That's real. So yeah, I would say just be, be, be excellent where you, where you are and mm. show up when it's time. And if you can't show up, um, physically and you don't feel like safe, you know, protesting, that's fine. I yeah. totally understand that. Donate mm. to those people. Donate, and it doesn't have to be money. Donate to you, Shine Heart. Right, that, this, but not only that, donate your time. Yeah. It really starts within our communities. That's right. Tell the young boy outside that he don't gotta be on the corner. Like, mm -hmm. you don't, you can. Mm. It's cool down there, I yeah. heard sometimes, yeah. don't know. So to flip it to like, the point of being excellent in your career path, what advice would you give a student who wants to shine in entertainment? What's the mindset? What steps do they take? Be smart. Use your the same skills that you would use in strategy, strategizing your 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 budget or everything, and strategize your plan. Mm. And it's know that your plans might change. Be open to that. Yeah. Um, I had no idea I was going to be the end arena host for the Washington Wizards. It just came out of nowhere. But. Be open to the opportunities that come yeah. and be smart with the ones that you have. Mm. Meaning that if you go into an opportunity, and I know a lot of kids don't like to work for free, but internships are 
everything. Everything. You like gotta start everything. Somewhere. So even if you're not getting money out of it, what are you getting out of it? Yeah. Five new contacts of people who believe in how hard mm -hmm. you work. And they could be the people that get you a job when you do graduate. Exactly. So remembering that, um, showing up like ready, um, and ready and willing to learn, especially if you're in college. You don't know, you don't know anything. Sorry. So get <laughs> together, get that together, get all that <laughs> ego together. Right. You might know how to get some popping followers, that's dope, but do you really know mm. like what this game is like? Right. Pay attention, be observant. Speak up when they're ready to like hear you. Right. Cause some don't go into it. The one thing I hate is a cocky intern mm. where you come there, you show up late, be on time. Ooh, be five minutes early. Um, uh, go in there and you're like, you belong in the building. That is the easiest way to get fired from a free mm. work situation. Right. Your job is to make sure that you are taking care of your duties well and then going above and beyond. Right. So you might only be there one day a week, but let that one day be their favorite day of the week because you're coming in there. That's um, and so do your work. Again, work. If there is, if I meet another girl who wants to be an on-air talent and she tells me she doesn't have a YouTube mm. or any type of series, I'm going to have problems. You, there are so many ways to create content right now that if you don't, it's on you. Mm. So I would say That's real. start now. There is no reason why you can't have your own show. Yeah. If you are an honor talent and you don't interview everyone, their mama has rapper cousins. That's real. <laughs> and rapper, um, you know, brothers and sisters, people who want to be discovered. Interview them about their song process. Yeah. Just so you know, when you do get the chance to interview a Pharrell, what how your voice sounds, how you mm. talk, what it looks like when you, when you use your body and your hands. Yeah. Start now. Like That's there right. is no reason why you can't start and don't let somebody tell you you can't. There it is. Gia, this was an amazing interview. I really appreciate you sitting down with us. Thank you, this was so much fun. I really like this whole shine heart. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> I get what y'all doing. You shine a heart. Hey, I'm looking forward to, to bringing you into the network, connecting yeah. you with some of our influencers, yeah. and hopefully, hopefully bringing you to our summits coming up uh, soon. Very nice. And you know, have you as a speaker as well. Would love that. So let everyone know how they can find you online, uh, drop your handles, and then, you know, yeah. Yes, first of all, thank you for bearing with me through this cold, y'all. I forgot that the weather was going to be changing. So actually, no, that's global warming. The weather has been changing uh -huh. so weirdly lately, but Thank you for bearing with me through this cold. Um, I just want to say thank you to everyone who you know supports this incredible organization because things like this are going to change our community one video, one outreach, you know, email, one step at a time. So continue to support you know th this organization, but also you can follow me at Gia Peppers on everything G I A P P P E R S like salt and pepper with an S, and um, and yes, that's my real name, and uh, go come out to the Wizards games. And, and oh, and pay attention to gabeppers.com because we got some dope stuff coming. Awesome. You guys can find me, Johnny Bailey, at one Johnny Bailey. Of course, follow the Shine Hard family at Shine Hard Fam and continue to be excellent. The way that you can be an activist is to be excellent at what you do. Yes. And as always, shine for the culture. Gia, thanks. See you Bye. Guys. Again, our goal is to help young black boys and girls discover their passion and change the world, but we cannot do this without the help of the Shine Heart community. Will you be the milestone donor that helps a 17-year-old black girl learn the path of a plastic surgeon? Will you be the keystone donor that helps a 22-year-old graduate break through into the tech industry? We as a community can accomplish so much together, but the time to act is now. Here's what you can do. Scroll down, click donate, and invest in the future of our community. I'm Johnny Bailey, and together we shine.